Hello guys, it's Unders. Today we're having a look at Neutron 2. Those of you that have uh, followed this channel, you know that I was a massive fan of Neutron. I think it, it's one of the best, like most cohesive plugins you could possibly buy if you were starting out. Absolutely recommended it um, for the fact that you could look at masking audio, you could work the EQs together. It did pretty much everything that a channel strip should do and so much more. It was missing a gate. That's been addressed, so we're excited about that. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a beat together for the Warrior Sound page. And, it, well, it's time to look at Neutron 2, so we're going to do a video at the same time because that is just how we roll. So what I've got at the moment is this. So there's lots of strings going on. We've got some piscato going on, some uh, staccato, some staccato. It doesn't matter. Everything going on string-wise. Pretty much everything in green here is the strings apart from these bottom three here. So it's my sub line. Um, it's a hi-hat made in alchemy. And then later on, we've got like a second synth going on top of the bass line there. Everything else, so... All of this shebang here is strings. So we can go to like some proper busy sections like here as well. And the first thing I've decided to use Neutron on is I've got a strings bus. So if we just solo that, like, we've got this lot going on. Excuse, we might get some pops and clicks because I'm running at quite a low latency so I can play on the keyboard in time. But then when I come to recording and mixing all these things down as well, it can become uh, a little bit laggy. So we might get some pops and clicks, but we're going to have to excuse those. So on this strings bus, Uh, we've got a couple of things going on, but most importantly is Neutron. There's a compressor going on. The compressor isn't really uh, doing anything. It's going to be compressing by about two decibels just with the kick drum, just because I've got lots of cellos going on, and it's just nice to just bring those down a little bit just so we can get a thump from the kick. Um, outside of that, everything else that's going on is Neutron. There's very minimal processing going on at the strings at the moment. There's a bit of EQ. On the big staccato patch, I've got some tape going on and I think a pull tech. Apart from that, it's really minimal at the moment. I'm just getting the like, overall balance and feel of everything right. However, I've really bust it, and I tend to do this quite a lot. I'll bust things together and work from the bus and then work backwards to maybe fix any problems that occur. But for me, getting everything working as like a key cohesive whole is better than working on each individual channel first. Just my process. So on here, we've only got a couple of things engaged. We've got the equalizer, compressor, and the exciter engaged. Now, it sort of built this patch for me, by analyzing the audio. I'm going to show you how we can do that with Neutron 2, which is pretty crazy. So what we'll do, we're going to copy the patch here. I'm going to just A, B the one that we've already got so you can hear what that's doing. And I'm just going to show you how it created that patch and then what I chose to tweak from there. So here it's just giving a little bit of glue, bringing all the strings together so they feel a little bit cohesive. It is rolling off the low end, but it's barely audible when you switch it in. And the little point here is just bringing up the flavor of those strings just a little bit. So let's disable that. And we're gonna open up the other one. And let's just default it. Engage it. So it's now going to be doing nothing. And what we're going to do is put the track assistant on. And I think we went for warm and low intensity. And instrument wise, we've gone for other because there's not specifically a string section, although it could work well with the guitars, but equally it might work with the percussion in this case. But we're going to go with other. 
and we're just going to play the strings and hit next and it's going to analyze the audio and try and come up with that patch. So it's put the same ones on, changed the order slightly, um, but hey, we're just going to bring the Exciter back around to here. Let's have a look on the EQ. It's done a similar thing with the EQ. It's used some different points. It looks like it's dipped uh, around here as well. What's that frequency point? Yeah, so it's taken out this time around the like 500 hertz region. Uh, has it put it? Yeah, it's put it in dynamic mode as well. So it's going to be pulling out at certain points. It feels like it might be compressing a bit harder. This may be taking as much as 5 dB out at some points. Let's see what we were doing before. Around the same amount, that's cool. So it's done a similar thing in terms of the EQ. Just slightly different areas that it's brought out. I have to say I'm still preferring my tweaked version, but that's the point of this. It finds these particular areas it gives you the idea of what's going on and then you can tweak it from there so if we just look again at the one that we've just analyzed let's have a listen to this it's designed to take this area out now 500 hertz is generally quite boxy let's see if it's just made that assumption or if there are actually some boxy tones there so it's definitely the right choice there if you boost right on that frequency you very very resonant not particularly a pleasant sound yeah so taking that out there was definitely the right thing to do um yeah overall it's done a good job it's doing what it should do now new feature wise it's introduced some pretty useful things the gate, for example, is something that needed to be on every single channel strip as far as I'm concerned. You, you can't have uh, a mixing channel strip without a gate, especially if you're working with recorded stems. It's just not something that you can really do. And what we're going to do here is just make a drums bus. We're going to test this gate out right here. Let's go to a busier section where I've got the rides and shaker and everything going on. And we're going to just default neutron again. That should just be flat now. Beautiful. And we're just going to let that assess it in the same process as before and see what it can bring up. So we're going to cancel that because we want to swap it to drums or percussion in this case. Okay, so that's a, a pretty subtle um, effect really. So it's only compressing by a couple of decibels, which is okay, and there was nothing at all. We've just made this channel up here. Exciter-wise, it's driving that a little bit with, well, in between some tape and a retro-style distortion, just adding some harmonic content in there. 
What's really nice, the representation on here, it shows you the waveform and areas that it fills in with like a, a solid white bar. That's where it's adding harmonic frequency. You can, so you can see the areas it's adding and boosting into. And in terms of EQ, it's given a little bump here in the low end. And let's see if it's found a resonance here again, because this seems to be the thing it drops, seems to find the resonance, drop it by about four decibel and just dynamic EQ it out. So let's see if it's nailed one again. Okay, maybe, maybe not so much a resonance, but it's definitely just taming that a bit there. Now something I just mentioned was the gate, and I think this is incredibly important to have. Um, if we were working with stems right now and we just wanted to really isolate those parts because we've got lots of bleed in a recording, you absolutely need this. So. And just by having that there, we can isolate the kick and snare out straight away. Well, like every DAW is going to have a gate in it. I mean, it would be insane if it didn't, but it needed to be within the channel strip itself or it, it was just not usable in that regard. If you were mixing drum stems, you had to gate them and then put Neutron on when Neutron is supposed to be the, uh, the channel strip solution. So it's amazing to have that in there straight away. Super useful. Just enhances the workflow of it more so. Another thing to notice, the GUI for Neutron's really improved. It's a lot clearer and easier to see. I'm very much enjoying that so far as well. Um, you know, we have the luxury of being able to bring up the original right next to it for comparison. Yeah, so layout wise, I mean, it it's just a, a better use of space, isn't it? It's visually just nicer to be able to see and read. I like these sliders being here rather than uh, below as well. There's just no need for that. You've saved space and you can have a better visualization. And the space over here is a little bit better used. We've got our left and right balances brought in as well, as well as the ability to go mono, phase invert and swap the stereo fields, something that's not included previously. It's just all very useful to, uh, to have in with access straight away to you. So it's a nice uh, GUI update and design improvement there. Should we just compare these two and uh, see if the track assistant does a similar thing or completely different? We'll see if that's been improved. So settings wise, we had you as warm and a low difference. So if we go for warm and open and I think subtle would be the closest match. Uh, make sure you're disabled, you are. Cool, so there's something straight away. This is system overloaded, whereas Neutron 2 did it no problem. Cool, so it's taken the same three plugins. It's put them in a different order, I believe. Pretty sure it had the Exciter last on here. No, no, I'm wrong, okay. Um, let's see, equalization wise, it's done a very similar job, taking out similar areas. This is going to be a higher dip, but the boost at the end, very, very similar. Um, exciter wise, almost identical choices there for it. Um, you know, it's boosted less here, gone up to six here, but percent wise, its choice of sound, its choice of band, absolutely identical. Compressor wise, cool. So it's in peak, it's very similar roll offs, you know, 0.1 difference on the ratio. But apart from that, pretty much bang on. Um, the attack and release is slightly different, so it's tweaked a little bit. But to be honest, Neutron was originally very, very good anyway. I still think it was fantastic. Um, it's just nice to see these overall improvements. What we're going to do next is do the can it automatically fix my mix video. I shall see you on that one.